For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to GibboPresents.com. It's Gibbo, and right now I'm joined by Tech Nine from Tech Nine Movements, who on Friday nights defeated Platinum Kids at Dead This Time in the Bronx. Tech, congratulations on the victory. This seems like a great way to finish 2017. Definitely a great way to finish the year. Definitely. The clash came down to the why it was decided by the final tune of the night. Did you think it would be this close? Honestly, no, I really didn't. But it, it, I, what I like about it is that it showed the fairness of the crowd. And on top of that, it, 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 it just made the dance a better dance. You know, like it gives something, it gives people something to talk about the next morning. It's just an all around good dance. Do you have a different level of respect for Platinum Kids now that you've faced off with them one on one? Well, honestly, I've always respected Platinum Kids because I know how far they come from. They didn't just start clashing in US Rumble, you know. I've known Platinum Kids when they used to come and do the 45 shootouts at Wild Palm back in back in 2010 and 2009 so i've i've always known they have a big love for the clash thing they just did the juggling because they were good at it and they made them a lot of money but i always knew they were clash fanatics from from an early early age why did this clash with platinum kids interest you why did you want to go up against them one of the main reasons is um we we had a dance together we had a, a juggling dance at the park together and um we attacked them and they attacked us you know and we couldn't respond back to their attack so they got the better of us at that dance so i went up to paul um to to marcus and said yo i think people want to see this dance i think we should give them the dance and he agreed right away and then we came on the internet and made it look like it was a, a internet call out, but we, we planned it way before we brought it on the internet. So big up Marcus for that. When did you begin to prepare for this clash and what did preparations consist of? Well, my preparation started the day the flyer dropped. I started voicing tunes because I knew the dance was real and it was going to happen. And there was no turning back now for them or for us. So what, what preparation for them was easy because you, you knew what they were coming with, you know? But one thing I didn't want to do and I really stood firm with it was I didn't want to burn out none of the songs that they depend on for two reasons. Number one, it would have made for a boring dance. If I would have played out all their songs, they would have had nothing to play. And then they would've, it would have been a boring dance. So. I, I just came in there with the mindset of let them play their way and we're going to come play our way. And it, and it made for a great dance because the dance was vibesy from beginning to end. Where we lacked, they picked up. And where they lacked, we picked up. You know, so it was, it was, it was a really good dance, man. I have no complaints. What had you identified as their weaknesses and how did you plan to exploit those? Um, one of their weaknesses that I knew was um, they didn't take time and rewrite songs. You know, everything with them was just, you know, direct. And I wanted to, to expose that, which is why I, I voiced one of their anthems and, and took it and made it not really my anthem, but my way of saying, if you ever play that song on me, I'm going to play this song on you. And it connected tonight. I couldn't believe how well the, the counteraction connected. And it connected without them even playing their anthem. I just played it. And it worked. You say the plan going in was to do you. What did doing you consist of? Well, here's the thing. Everybody knows I'm a dub plate fanatic. And I don't, I'd really never get a chance to showcase my dubs because I'm always in 10 minute rounds and, and and dub for dub. I have one of the deepest dub for dub boxes as far as like right now, not dead artist wise. I'm just, I just mean like I'm, I'm a real big foundation fanatic as well as a new tune fanatic, 
you know and i have one of the very few well-rounded dub boxes out there but i never get to showcase it the right way and doing me consists of showing people some of these dubs that i've taken time to to voice i played so much combinations tonight it was ridiculous even i thought i was doing too much com um, combinations at one time but everyone connected so I, I was really happy that people accepted the combination that I was playing. What would you say was the biggest forward of the night? Oh, man. The biggest forward would be, for us, would be the second round of fresh rhythm juggling. For them, the Idonia back to back to back. And it worked. You know, the people got, you know, they got, they got what they came to see. The only thing I got to say is nobody expected me to win everybody just had me getting locked off you know and and one thing i gotta say there's no better feeling than looking in the crowd and seeing all your haters cuddled up together watching you win that feeling cannot be you know just just one for tech nine you know what i'm saying why do you think people didn't expect you to win well, I'm, like I said, I never really get to showcase my box like that. And when, when we're in microwave clashes, it limits us because now we, we have this huge box to showcase. We have to compress it into a 10 minute round. You know, and sometimes you may, you know, you may forget certain things and tunes people like, like I'm known for not playing the regular tunes, but I played them tonight and it worked. You know, like people, songs people haven't heard, but it wasn't like big exclusive songs that nobody can get. You know, it, it was, yo, I just got to big up the crowd because it was, it was the most unbiased crowd I've played in front of in years. You know what I'm saying? It was like, tonight I realized that it was sound men and neutral fans, people that just came out to hear music. And that's what they got, good music from both sounds. The clash took place in the Bronx, which, of course, is Platinum Kids' as backyard. But when it came to the makeup of the crowd, roughly what percentage was people from the Bronx? What percentage was people from Brooklyn or elsewhere? Well, from selling the tickets, I got a really inside look on knowing where a lot of the people came from. It was a lot of Florida people, a lot of Connecticut people, a lot of Boston people came out. You know, and, and uh, surprisingly, a lot of Jersey people came out to support the dance. And I got a big up Jersey because I don't think no New York sound clashes in Jersey as much as me. You know, and it was good to see so much Jersey people come out. How would you grade your performance? Are you happy with it or are you a perfectionist? Um, Of course, I'm a perfectionist, but... I'm not mad. I just think that it made for a great dance the way everybody voted. I feel I got robbed around, and I feel they got robbed around. You know, but rob for rob, whole of rob. You know what I mean? So it was good for you, good for me. We we both got robbed around, and we both took around. So I just feel it was it was overall great. You know, the crowd, the crowd. You can't go against the crowd. How would you grade your opponent's performance and did they surprise you in any way? Um, you know what? The, the one thing that surprised me the most is the way I thought the dance was going to go, it went the other way. I thought they were going to go hard the first two rounds and win the first two rounds. And then when it came to the last three rounds, we were going to dominate. But it ended up that we dominated the first two rounds. They won the third and the fourth and then we won the fifth so it was it surprised me because i didn't think they they i think they paced themselves right but while they were pacing we were dominating you know what i mean and and my first two rounds were set up to go as hard as they would have that i expected them to go you know all the new tunes and you know i, I tried to, to, to cater to everybody the young crowd in there and uh the old clash heads that know the, the, the old rhythms, but still like new tunes. So I really try to cater to everybody slowly. February 3rd, you're going to be in the UK for yes. Top Strikers, which will see you square off with Platinum Cartel and White Magic. What do you see 
as each of your upcoming opponents greatest strengths and how do you see this clash playing out well the greatest threats to me is that they know the uk crowd better than me you know it's, it's i'm going against two uk sounds that know their market and and i'm coming to foreign territory to prove myself you know and and i don't think people realize how much i rate the whole uk music scene i've been to the uk on a couple occasions at least five times already you know and i got to see the, how they how much they love the sound system culture and how much they love the roots music and how they like it as authentic as possible so that experience gives me a little more confidence coming into this dance because i'm going to surprise a lot of people a lot of people I believe you were in Africa recently. Can you give me a recap of the trip and describe the experience? Well, Africa, I've been going there for the last six years for the same promoter. And every year just gets better and better. Like um, the first year I went, it was 500 people. This year when I went, it was 7,000 people. The same promoter, same event every year. It just grew bigger and bigger. And... What, what happened was a sound clash was introduced to them two years ago. But it was just like a test run to see if they would, you know, accept it. And it was done at the end of the night when really, like, you know, not too much people was there. So he just wanted to test it. And then last year, the first real one kept. And this year, the last year when it kept, it was kept at the end again. But this year, it was kept in the middle where all 7,000 people were there. And it was Young Hawk versus Dynamic. Dynamic won the first real one. And then Young Hawk came and won the second one. Which is great because it gives other sounds opportunities because the, the promoter leaves it up to me to pick the sounds or who's going to come and get the experience over there. You know, and I, I always host it. So we, we always bring reggae artists there, but this year they brought Afrobeat artists and it was amazing. You know, you get a light show, you get fireworks during the, the, the performance. It was, it was something I've never seen. Big up Billy Bronco, by the way, Roaring Thunder Sound. As we get set to enter the new year, do you have any goals for yourself or the sounds for 2018? Um, only goal I, I have is just to, to go bigger. You know, you, you, you always want the most for your sound. You know, so you always want to see your sound reach as great as it could get, you know? So I only plan to go harder for 2018 than I did this year. More tunes, more dubs. Let's see how much I can get this year, you know? Tech, congratulations on the victory. Best wishes for 2018 and beyond. And thanks a lot. Thanks, Gibbo. Bless up. Gibbo presents... presents.